now we will discuss respiratory system of birds in other sense you can say avian respiratory system avian respiratory you know what because we are in veterinary institute avian respiratory system is much important for a veterinarian because so many diseases of birds are associated with respiratory system so for this purpose you must know some basic anatomy and physiology of respiratory system of birds and second point there is a great variation between the respiratory system of birds and mammalian species because in veterinary we will give focus lot of focus to the domesticated animals which mainly are mammalian animals so this is also important you know the some comparative anatomy of the respiratory system of mammalian species and avian species is clear so we will look first into the basic anatomy basic anatomy of respiratory system then we will look into the mechanism of respiration in birds finally we will discuss few clinical clinical applications or clinical importance point related to the avian respiratory system. systems so first of all you you have to look into the basic anatomy of respiratory system so respiratory system have normally what you know what they have normally a respiratory system have which organs normally a respiratory system consist of of nasal cavity larynx trachea bronchi para bronchus this is your bird okay start here actually if we compare to the mammalian species there is no big difference between nasal cavity of birds and domestic animals so we are going to give lot of focus on to the lower respiratory system lower respiratory system which actually we start from trachea start from about larynx you know birds have larynx yes birds have larynx listen carefully uh, what is the role of larynx in domesticated animals birds have larynx but they do not have vocal cord in larynx they do not have but they have an other organ you know which we call pharynx or voice box of birds voice box are this organ actually this structure is located on the base of trachea on the base of this beginning of trachea here tra before trachea bifurcate into right and left lungs before trachea bifurcate into right and left lungs there is a swelling there is a diverticulum before the bifurcation before the bifurcation mean dividing into two parts okay this trachea is divided into which is we call primary in other sense primary bronchi so here if this is a trachea this structure this diverticulum is voice box and they are entering into lungs they are entering into lungs here there is also comparative anatomy point in mammalian species mostly you will see trachea is have a cartilage lining hyaline cartilage lining but in birds this hyaline this trachea this lining the cartilage lining is completely covered the the completely covered the trachea this lining is complete 
in mammals this lining is incomplete a c shape or c shape here is complete in birds one difference is that the and also the number muscles do the birds trachea do not have too much muscles here one difference is that the trachea of birds have the complete ring of cartilage in mammal the cartilage ring is in c shape or in complete the secondly before this trachea bifurcate enter into right and left lungs they have a diverticulum a swelling this actually organ is responsible for why the sound you heard from any birds the sound you heard from so this organ will produce this is known as voice box in birds number 2 point next majorly and grassly we have lungs we have there is two things which are much important because birds do not have diaphragm birds so there is no proper dermatization between the thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity of the bird you cannot differentiate properly because there is no diaphragm diaphragm is actually boundary diaphragm is actually structure which differentiate between abdominal cavity and so here in bird we do not have diaphragm so that means there is no proper differentiation thoracic and and also with if you compare with the uh, uh, with the domestic animals you do not have proper pleura here you do not have why because in domestic animals the lungs of the domestic animal have ability to the expand and relax but in bird here these animals are these lungs are not small and they are rigid and they are fixed into the ribs they are and during respiration also they do not expand and they do not need any cavity they do not need any extra space they do not need any cavity or extra space to expand and relax so the lungs are but if you see grossly you will find indentation here on the top of the lung surface this is actually because of the ribs actually because of the ribs they are attached with the they are fixed in the ribs and point is that two points to remember birds do not have diaphragm that's mean there is no proper abdominal and thoracic cavity boundaries and second they do not have any proper pleura because they do not need us extra space or things to the extend and relax third one this is a more important a major differentiation they have a additional organ additional structure or membranous sac which we call air sacs which are associated with the lungs a uh, normally a bird have nine air sac nine air sacs then most of them are paired for example we will start from the cervical region we will start with the cervical region so here we have two air sacs which is called as cervical sir cervical air sac in the neck area clear number 2 here back of this this area as is the clavicular region so here we have one large air sac this air sac is known as inter clavicular air sac clear from here is to on the lungs we have four air sacs in thoracic region four air sacs in thoracic regions they air sacs are actually what they are membranous sacs they are associated from with avian lungs associated with avian lungs clear so these air sacs because this one upper side so these are known as anterior anterior thoracic air sac clear this same here anterior thoracic air sac this one will be posterior thoracic air sac this one posterior thoracic two more we have here this will known as 
abdominal sac abdo because you know this this name is actually given on the base of which region of body they are found uh, clear Le look here again carefully and other important point in the birds in the birds we have nine air sac more of them are for example abdominal air sacs are paired posterior thoracic anterior thoracic paired cervical paired and intraclavicular air sac is unpaired so total 1 2 3 3 double 6 2 this 8 and 1 is 9 totally they are 9 but you know there is some variation between the species maybe some birds have one air sac less and maybe some have up to 11 but the common number is 9 the common number is nine so in that nine two cervical one four thoracic two this name was given on the basis of you know this air sacs they are they have many functions the number one they do expand and relax you know in other sense they expand they store air but they they are not involved in air exchange they are not involved in they just they store they, they store air and also because of they are maybe some like intraclavicular air so they can penetrate enter into the bones like humerus which is called pneumatic bones so they also provide a lot of help in birds to fly and another things you know the birds respiratory system is considered the most sufficient respiratory system in among the different animals why because bird need to fly they go on high altitude the level of oxygen will be decreased so they need more efficient respiratory system so that's why the bird respiratory system is more efficient with the compared to the mammalian species but come to the basic anatomy we are looking actually first of all the basic anatomy of what we have nasal cavity what we have if go in the day here we have what naris the opening you know for air entry but you know some bird if the bird who spend life in water or dip into water they maybe do not have naris because if they have the water can enter inside it's a problem but commonly they have naris and nasal cavity then we have what larynx but larynx they do not perform the function of voice box do not have vocal cord then we have a trachea it, it, trachea is also different with compared to mammalian species we have a complete ring of cartilage then we have voice box syrinx this is a uh, voice organ for the birds then this is divided into primary bronchi and then we have the lungs lungs are little rich do not expand and they are fixed in the bony structure they are fixed in the bony structure and they have associated membrane membrane is sac which we call air sacs okay so point is that now we will look on to the little structure inside structure of the lungs to understand more betterly now we will take a diagram of only one lungs Look here, you know what, if this is a avian lungs, okay, for hyalus there is an entry of what, trachea, this primary bronchi actually divided into, no, here is the story different, nomenclature, this divide into, Scandry. This divide into scandry. Then meso. This scandry will be divided into tertiary or have a special name which is a tube-like structure which we call which we call para bronchi or bronchus. 
So point is that this primary bronchus divide into secondary, this secondary into para. Our nomenclature is the problem, you know. Sometimes a one way is called this called will be called as primary entry, this will be called as primary, this will be called as secondary, and this is called as tertiary. This will be called as but the common terms which you used in avian respiratory system are different. The primary is sometimes called as mesobronchus. Are called as mesobronchus, secondary is secondary, but this is called trashy is called as para bronchi or bronchus. They are actually the main because there is a comparative like mammal species, we do not have alveolus. We do not have Instead of alveolus, we have a tube-like structure. Which have we have a tube-like structure, which is called as this is the area where is the gases exchange occur in the lungs. Site of exchange in mammal species, we have what alveolus. Here we have this is a major point to need to understand. It's clear. Look at another diagram to make this more understandable for you people. Let's take a schematic diagram. If you going like this, this one is we have what meso bronchi meso from meso bronchi we have what yes like this this one secondary this one okay from secondary bronchi we have yes. Here we have a tube shaped parabronchi. Clear? <coughs> you know in the in the lungs of birds, this is a one network, you know, they have three to four network in single lungs like this. What mesobronchi enter into the lungs, a main or middle bronchus. This give rise to on the dorsal and ventral side. Here also ventral side they give secondary bronchi. They give secondary. from secondary bronchi we have the branches of para bronchi. This para bronchi is the site of it's clear. So this is story about the basic anatomy of the avian respiratory system no look into the mechanism of respiration in the bird how birds do you know one term is very important you know what is ventilation no I really want one thing ventilation respiration because we are looking into now into the mechanism of respiration in the bird I really want somebody define these two terms for me. I don't know. What is respiration boy? Exactly. One, by, one by one. Physiological, yes? What is the ventilation? You know, you have heard the term cellular respiration. Yes. What is cellular respiration? Yes. One by one. A change of gases between cells and blood. Uh, the process in which uh, glucose is converted into carbon dioxide. Okay. Actually, the word respiration and cellular respiration is the two different terms. Two people sometimes confuse with respiration and cell. cellular respiration. In other sense, the respiration on the cellular level, respiration on the a, a, a complete mechanism which have involvement of many molecules and many cycles, the production of glucose, production of oxygen for the usage of cell. This is known as cellular respiration. The respiration is actually we are in taking some air from the external environment. Any living or multicellular organism taking uh, air from the external. external environment and going into the lungs there is exchange between the 
gases exchange we are taking oxygen from that air which is coming from the external environment and giving back to the carbon dioxide at the same time so this cycle this whole story taking in a uh, gases exchange this whole story is known as respiration. respiration but if you somebody asks you what is the ventilation ventilation mean just we look on the route of the air how and which parts the air enter in the body and where this air go this external air and how this come back and leave the body again so this is a cycle of air just if you are looking just in another sense the mechanical entry of air and leaving the body this is known as ventilation ventilation, ventilation is a general term how if you take the example of this classroom how air is coming inside and how air is going outside how have you maintain a architecture who make this room who have a idea how will air enter here how will leave this room this is known as ventilation so because no we are looking into the respiration or ventilation both togetherly in birds how this uh, this happen there is two important and other terms which can uh, under the respiration or ventilation you may be know which is known as inspiration you heard this term yes, what is called this n pi and other one is opposite term is expiration x what is inspiration and expiration that's the point entry of air when is give just give focus to the ventilation okay forget this respiration the gas is exchange our whole mechanism just give to the importance of ventilation look on to the inspiration and expi inspiration mean expiration is in other sense the entry of the air into the respiratory system is inspiration and removal are going back of the air from, from respiratory system to the environment is expiration you know what if you know the some physiology for this ventilation for this ventilation we need what we need a body a physiology of muscles a group of muscles who perform this inspiration and expiration for example i can tell you the diaphragm in the mammalian species is involved in inspiration expiration lungs itself they do expand and relax in for the inspiration and no we are looking into the avian respiratory system we have rule out already we do not have diaphragm and we also to rule out that we do not have a proper pleural cavity or pleura properly so in that story how birds do inspiration and expiration if you need to understand the mechanism of respiration or ventilation in the bird the question number 1 is that birds do not have diaphragm yes. then how will they do this point number 1 because in respiration of domestic species this thoracic cavity and the boundary of thoracic cavity diaphragm this is the muscle of thoracic cavity cage they are together involved in the inspiration and expiration but in the birds whole body is involved in the birds whole body is involved in inspiration expiration and mainly you know what you know the sternum the term sternum yes. the sternum is the bone the chest bone in the birds they have very well developed sternum they have very well which is commonly known as keel bone which is commonly known as these this keel bone are the sternum of the bird is if you see are covered by a lot group of muscles a strong group of if you observe in the dissection hall the keel bone is covered by a strong that muscle or you can call that chest bulge or thoracic region muscle they muscles are togetherly involved in the inspiration and with the contraction and relaxation of these muscles respiration or ventilation take place in avian respiratory system that's why because we have a well developed or modified sternum in the birds or which we call keel bone and this area this region is covered by the strong and heavy muscles so this whole area togetherly you can say abdominal and thoracic area we do not have a proper boundary in the birds involved in the avian respiratory system what really happen we need to understand we need a make a diagram 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल अप टू हेयर इज क्लियर एनी क्वेश्चन ओके so you know this this is a diagram to understand the mechanism of the respiration in the birds for example this point here is this is we have what meso bronchus or bronchi come to here this is what this one is abdominal most of species have large in size abdominal air sac okay and some species have large thoracic air sacs okay and here this one is this one is another sense to understand this diagram maybe you can call just understanding purpose this is a caudal air sac and this is the interior or cranial is good you can just call cranial air sac point is that they are caudal to the lungs and they are cranial to the lungs point is that our posterior thoracic is no problem point is that we have two air sacs here to understand this diagram one is caudal to the lungs one is the cranial to the lungs but both are associated with lungs to understand this here middle these tubes are known as the no para bronchi they are known as para bronchus is clear what really happen birds have you know the one cycle that's mean if the air is entering for and coming from entering into the respiratory system and coming back to the environment from environment entering into the respiratory system again the same air from respiratory system going back to the environment so this whole procedure is known as ventilation this whole procedure is known as ventilation and this happen the entry with the inspiration and exit with the expiration this is a one cycle this is a but in birds to do this complete a uh, one bolus of air one bolus of air entry into the respiratory system and exit from the respiratory need two cycle need two cycles that's mean two inspiration and two respirations is clear look here how this really happen cycle one the first cycle okay have definitely what inspiration okay and expiration definitely and the cycle number 2 second cycle have also similarly what inspiration, inspiration and expiration part is that a single phase of ventilation in birds need two cycle of inspiration and expiration how this happen let's take a we are making a ideal the, this for example this is the bolus of air okay this is what to understand understanding purpose this will enter from the mesobronchus this will enter from the how how this enter question number 1 how inspiration occur how and that's if inspiration and or expiration you are sure yes, how this will enter point number 1 that's i will tell you what really happen the muscle of keel bones are the muscle of birds point number 1 whole body is involved whole body is involved so these muscles will go relax they will be if they relax what really happen on the effect on the air sacs air sac will be expand definitely muscle will relax air sac will be expand what really happen when muscle relax also the volume of body increase the muscle contracts the volume of body decrease and its muscles contract actually they decrease the volume when they relax they increase or normalize so in inspiration first inspiration 
मसल विल बी रिलैक्स वॉल्यूम ऑफ बॉडी विल ऑफ द बर्ड विल बी इंक्रीज एयर विल बी कम इन टू एंड ऑल्सो देर इज वट रियली हैपन वी आर गिविंग दिस विल बी एक्सपेंड सो दिस बोलस ऑफ यूर एयर विल हेयर यू नो इट्स इफ यू मॉन मोन कॉम्प्लिकेटेड हेयर हेयर वी ऑल्सो हैव एन अदर क्लास ऑफ पैरा ब्रोंकाय इन बर्ड दिस इज कॉल्ड नियो पलमोनिक पैरा ब्रोंकाय एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड पेल पलमो ओ मैन देर इज टू टाइप्स ऑफ पैरा ब्रोंकाय हेयर दिस इज नोन एज पेल पलमोनिक पैरा ब्रोंकाय हेयर दिस इज नोन एज बिफोर दिस द एबडोम ऑफ द कार्डल सैक वी हैव नियो Palmonic. I will explain what is the importance of this. So they are similar. They are so there no structural difference. Just they are located near to the air sac. Okay, and they are the main para bronchus is considered. What really happen when muscle relax? Body volume will be increase. Also the air sac will be increase. extend. So this bolus the air from the external environment will be rush into the abdominal air sac. Is clear. come to here okay and you know why the that and other reason that's why why we call the uh, the system of uh, birds is efficient here because at so that this enter this will pass into the neo pulmonary bronchi and the small some site of respiration is already take place here gas exchange is take place here so this air the second phase you know what is the second phase what really happen in expiration we are giving focus on to here muscle will be contract muscle will be contract and the body cavity will be the volume decrease what really have it would pressure on the air sacs and air sacs will also decrease in the volume and they will push this this ball is from air sac to the para bronchi clear so this air will become keep touch with here what really happen we have finished inspiration and expiration and our bolus is still here our bolus is still here that's mean ventilation is not completed with concern to this bolus with concern to we have only one cycle we will again have now what really happen we will have entry of air again here yes yes, yes. this is an other for example this bolus is known as any boy of the class okay no is the entry of the girl we have an other bolus okay don't worry i will explain this is any girl of the class fine so what really happen we have again inspiration what really happening here in inspiration this will be relax or expand here this is also air sac the same result here this will also this will also so what really happen in the result of this this bolus the boy of the class will be jump into cranial air sac will be jump into cranial air sac and this girl is entering now this will this will go into abdominal air sac this is not here now this is up to here point we are here on third phase the number which is actually second inspiration are you getting me what really happen if little take a easy first inspiration a ball is a boy is enter okay the ball is oxygen is entering here or air is entering here this with the first inspiration this will go into the and in expiration this will jump into the para bronchi but the next inspiration this will jump into the cranial and we have entry of the new air uh, girls of the class entry of the new air this will come number 4 okay 
point is that still for this girls bowlers this inspiration is the first inspiration okay and for the boy this inspiration is the second inspiration this for this is the second inspiration so what really happening now we have what expiration now the fourth phase or the second phase of the second cycle second phase of the what really happening on the special muscle will be contract volume of the body will be decrease so this this bolus will be jump into para bronchi and this bolus which is here red one this will go out the body this will go out the body via this bronchus okay this will go out from the body you know what listen again carefully to understand this story how gas enter in the avian respiratory system how this gas leave the avian air sorry respiratory system for this ventilation we need two cycles we need for the single bolus of inspiration two cycle of inspiration and two cycle of expiration but they happen like this no that's not there is a first inspiration and say no there is a first inspiration then first expiration then the second inspiration and the this is the in the sequence they are in the sequence when first we have what inspiration then we have expiration again we have inspiration then we have expiration clear how this happening look on this diagram in first inspiration for example this red or boy bolus the air is entering into the abdominal at that time the already introduced air which have already lungs have definitely will will be because this expand this also expand this expand this also will be come into the cranial cells this is a new or fresh air this is a new or the the already air will be jump into the point is that if for this this one is the first inspiration the air which is already present in the lungs that inspiration is the second inspiration for that air okay is clear with the second expansion no sorry first expansion what really happen expiration this will be go into the para bronchi and already present air will be go out from the outside and also when you go into the third or the second inspiration you will find there is a entry of the new air sac there is entry of the new air bolus new air bolus or the girls this will go into the already present will go into the cranial and this will leave from the with the expiration is clear very easy Cy two cycles ventilation have birds two cycles inspiration expiration again inspiration again this is a sequence in first inspiration the bolus will be in go to the abdominal sac in first expiration the same bolus will be go into the para bronchi the next the second inspiration a new bolus in, introduce of the air and the already existing bolus of the air will be enter into the cranial air sac and the second and the last phase are the in the expirations what really happen this will go out and this will jump into the para bronchi is clear yes. this is a cycle this is a how air enter into the respiratory system of the birds and leave this in other sense this is a ventilation mechanism of ventilation. because we did not discuss how the the gas ex, gases exchange occur we just discussed the route of air clear so this is a very much different from the mammalian species that's why we give lot of stress is clear any question no and the, finally we will look into the how gases exchange occur how the mechanism of gases exchange in many senses is similar with mammalian species there is not nothing special just the 
mechanism of entry of the air of ventilation is different the entry of air is and the structure is different because here in birds we have for example we have this what parabronchi we have for example we are making another diagram to understand gases exchanges from this parabronchi definitely there is a blood supply there is a we have blood capillaries yes so the <laughs> this mechanism gases exchange mechanism in the bird is known as cross current known as why because the flow of air and the flow of blood opposites in opposite direction for example this is a flow of air and here this is a flow of blood clear if you go in deep into the histology the cell in the blood vessels and the cell in the parabronchi is similar what they have in the mammalian species they have type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes they have type 1 because these cells have ability to diff diffuse enough oxygen okay this cell here we have pneumocytes type 1 and type 2 similar with mammalian they will catch oxygen from the blood they will catch oxygen from the and they'll give the carbon dioxide to the no so blood will give the carbon dioxide to the this parabronchi different is here with compared to mammalian mammalian species they have the alveolus and we have what if you go into the deep structure more histological structure or microscopic structure you will find this your parabronchi is actually arranged like this if this is your parabronchi they will give rise to what if you remember this uh, yes this this area is known as atrium this area is known as atrium or atria this th then they have these like this okay they have like this no no what is blood we are yes they have structure like this more better like this so this area you know if this is a parabronchi this structure we are taking a cross section and understanding the structure of parabronchi we have the middle space area is known as atrium from atrium we have an entry in fundibulum here we have finger like projections which are actually known as air, air capillaries must remember this so this structure actually better to understand this structure is actually air capillaries this structure is if you are understanding the mechanism of gases exchange this structure is actually so this how this air capillaries interacting with blood capillaries this air capillaries interacting with blood capillaries so here there is a point there is the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen will be the diffusion procedure between mammalian species and avian species is same how they diffuse there is no difference difference is that we have a here air capillaries a different structure a huh? different different structure in animal uh, mammalian species we have alveolus we have it's clear so that's how the gases change occur in the birds it's clear and then lastly and finally if you are a veterinarian you have to keep in mind some clinical aspects related to the respiratory system the number one do not inject intraperitoneal injection injection in the parts do not inject intraperitoneal injection in the parts why because the intraperitoneal injection can enter into the body cavity and can rupture the Air, because you know these air sacs are not small try to understand when they are filled with air they cover lot of area of the body actually normally they are for example if you talk about the air sacs of the abdominal cavity or abdominal air sacs they are inter, they are you can say are uh, uh, set or arranged between the organs or intestines many when air is entered they expand they cover lot of the area space in that they share lot of space in that cavity so being a veterinarian you are not you keep in mind do not inject, inject intraperitoneal 
junctions. Because if this happens, the air sac can be ruptured. It's if the air sac is ruptured, there is difficulty in breathing. There, if there is diff continuous difficulty in breathing, but can... Number two point. A common agent, a 